Welcome Year 9 to the next video tutorial for our indices topic. This video is going to look at scientific notation. Scientific no notation is a really handy way um, that we can sort of, sh I guess, shrink a number or enlarge a number. Um, and and the reason we want to do this is sometimes we have really, really big numbers and we have to use those numbers, say, in scientific calculations. And it's a bit impractical to have to write out all of the zeros. Now, this is true for really, really large numbers. As you can see, I've written one down here. We can see there's quite a few zeros in that number there. But you can also have numbers that are really, really small. And they'll have lots of zeros in front of, um, well, I guess, after the decimal point. Um, is what I'm trying to say. After the decimal point, there'll be lots and lots of zeros, making this a really tiny number. Now, scientists would use these, these numbers a lot, such as this one here, the speed of light, which is 300 million metres per second. So you can imagine, if you were doing lots of calculations, you wouldn't want to have to keep writing that number there, 300 million, every time you did a calculation. So there is a way that will use indices scientific notation um, to, to shorten it, to make it easier. Now there's another way to say scientific notation. Uh, you can also say standard form. So I'll say both of those. I'll try and interchange them a little bit just as a reminder that scientific notation and standard form are the same thing. All right, so what we're going to do is have a look at how how do we actually put something into scientific notation and we'll use this one here 300 million meters per second as an example so this is obviously a really large number isn't it 300 and then six numbers or six zeros i should say after it so this is what scientific notation looks like as a mathematical definition what we have is a number here um, we just use A here as an, as an example. So A will represent any number, but A will be a number that's between 1, it can include 1, and up to 10, but not including 10. Okay, so up to, say, 9.99999, but not 10. That number will then be multiplied by a power of 10. So any power here, it's just going to be a whole number. That's what this integer here means. I might make a little note of that. It's going to be a whole number, but that can be positive or negative. Positive or negative. Okay, so when we multiply by powers of 10, that means we're multiplying by either 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, etc. And the way that we, we generally do that, the quick way, is to move the decimal point. If we've got a negative index here, that means that the number is actually being divided by that power of 10. Again, we can move the decimal point either to the left or the right, depending on whether we're making the number bigger or whether we're making the number smaller. So as we get go through some examples, hopefully that will make some more, more sense. Let's do this example here. Let's convert it into scientific notation or standard form. So the first thing that we do so that we've got the number out the front is we start from the left hand side and we put a decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So that means if there's zeros in front of this, we're not picking them, okay? What we do is we find the first digit from the left that's not a zero. So obviously we've got this one here, three, that's not a zero. We put a decimal point after the three. So we'll get 3.0 we'll get the number three. And what we do is we put our times 10 in, because that's the next part here, isn't it? And then we work out how many times would we move the decimal point to get it back to where it was, which was at the end of this number. So if you have it here, how many zeros have you got here? Or how many decimal points have you moved it? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what this means is if I take the number 3 and I multiply it by 10 to the power of 8, I will get this number up here. So these two are actually equal to each other. 300 million is the same as 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Now this is a lot easier to write, isn't it? 3 by 10 to the 8 instead of writing 3000000 every time you use that number. 
So this is the whole point of scientific notation, to make it easier for ourselves. So that's our answer, 3 by 10 to the 8. And just checking, look, this number here, 3, is it between 1 and 10? Yes, it is. If I was to pick the, uh, the decimal point down here, we'd see that we'd have 30, and 30 is not between 1 and 10, so that would be wrong. Okay, let's look at some examples. Here we have write in standard form, so this means write in scientific notation. I'll just put that for short, not. <laughs> okay, let's do it. We've got our first non-zero digit is here. So what we've got here is 2.1, don't we? Now if I wanted to get 2.1 to be 21,000, to what power of 10 am I multiplying? Well, if I've got my decimal point here, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where it was originally. So if I multiply 2.1 by 10 to the power of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I should get 21,000. Okay, next one. Let's choose our first non-zero digit. Here it is here, 6. We'll put the decimal point after the 6. So this is 6.2. To what power of 10 must I multiply to get it to be 620? This is a nice easy one, isn't it? 1, 2. This one here is a small number. This is a small one, so this is going to be a little bit different. Have a think about what you think I might do before I do this one. So what we've got here is our first non-zero digit is actually over here. It's after the decimal point. There it is. So again, I'm going to put the decimal point after, so 2.0 times 10. Now have a think. If I put to the power of, say, positive 2, you can see that this, the decimal point is two places away from this one. That would give me that number there, but that is too big, isn't it? That's actually gone too big. That's actually saying 2.0 times 100. That's not right, is it? So what do you think we might do instead? Hopefully you can see that what we're going to do is put a little negative here. What this now means is 2.0 divided by 100. That would mean moving this decimal point two places to the left, 1, 2, and that would give us the number that we've got, 0 0.02. So you can see when you've got a small number like this that you want in standard form, what we do is we use that negative index and that's to indicate that the number is being divided by 100. If you remember your negative indices, you know that I can divide this, I can write it like this, 2.0 divided by 10 to the power of 2. Okay, so Let's do another one like that. We can see this one down here. Let's find the first non-zero digit. There it is, the 8. That means the decimal point is going to come in here after the 8. So we've got 8.4. Put your times 10 in. And let's have a look. How many places has that decimal point moved? 1, 2, 3. And also have a look, to get 8.4 to be smaller, to be 0.0084, I would be dividing by that, wouldn't I? So it's got to be a negative. So this number here has gotten smaller, negative index. These ones up here, 6.2, that had to get bigger, so it must be a positive index. Always compare what you've got to what it was originally and check, is your number getting bigger or is it getting smaller? Just a few more examples for you. Let's go the other way. Let's write in decimal form. So let's write as a normal number, how we would normally write these numbers. Let's have a go at that. Okay, so we've got 3.2 times 10 to the power of 3. So what this means is 3.2 times 1,000, isn't it? Because 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. 
When you multiply by 1000, we're moving that decimal point one, two, three times. Well, you can see that this would be equal to 3200. Next one. 10 to the power of 5, that's a much bigger number, isn't it? So we're going to write this 6.1 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's the answer to that one. You can just move that decimal point five times if you want. One, two, three, four, five. That is one way to help you. If you're worried about get, not getting the right number of zeros here, of course, um, that's a common thing to get wrong with these. And the last one here, well, let's have a look. We've got a negative index. So how about we write this with our negative indices? like so. So this is 8.2 divided by 100. 8.12, sorry, divided by 100. So that is moving the decimal point two places to the left because the number is getting smaller. You're dividing by 100, it's getting smaller. Have a look, the decimal point was here. One, two, we'd have a zero at the front. There it is. Okay, final one. Sometimes we can be faced with things like this where we have to simplify first and then make sure our, our answer is in scientific notation. So what have we got here? We've got two numbers that are in that standard form, but they're being multiplied. Now, they're in brackets at the moment, but that's just to show you that these are two separate numbers that are being multiplied together. It doesn't actually matter because when we multiply out, the order here isn't essential. It's fine. What I can do is go 3 by 2. That's because it's multiplication, of course. So 3, I'll rewrite this like 3 by 2 by 10 to the 4 by 10 to the 6. Maybe that makes a little bit more clear what I'm going to do. 3, 2 is a 6. Same base being multiplied, add the indices by 10 to the 10. This one down here, have a look. We've got a division symbol here. So I'm actually going to rewrite this the way I always do, and that is in a fraction form like that. 9 over 3, well, that's equal to 3. Same base here, These, this is being divided, so what do we do? We subtract the indices, 7 minus 4. So we get 3 by 10 to the power of 3. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video. Remember to pause wherever you need to. Go back and re-watch if necessary as well. Um, and you can copy these examples down if you'd like to have them for future reference. Thank you.